At high voltages, it is easier to insulate the stationary armature winding, which may be as high as 11 kV or even more in some cases. Since it is a three-phase AC generator, very high voltage will be giving us output. We need to take out the output. If it has been placed in the rotor, the armature, very very difficult for us to do insulating the rotating armature. For that reason, it has been placed in the stator side so that it will be stationary, insulation is made easier. The second point, the generated high voltage output can be directly taken out from the stationary armature. There is one more uh, advantage. Uh, since uh, stator is stationary and armature winding is stationary in the stator, whatever output voltage which can be generated can be easily taken out since it is stationary but if it has been placed in the rotor and continuously rotating very very difficult to take the output power with in which uh, it is moving continuously whereas for the rotate rotary armature there will be large brush contact drop at high voltages also the sparking at the brushes surface will be a problem to look after so when it's continuously rotating if it has been continuously rotating the sparking at the brushes may occur so this is also one more the problem of the rotating armature. If the field exciter winding is placed in the rotor, low voltage DC can be transferred safely to the exciter winding via slip rings. So uh, since um, field windings are placed in the rotor side and is rotating, so low voltage DC supply we can be fed uh, to the exciting the rotor and it will not be any problem. The armature winding can be braced well to prevent deformation caused by high centrifugal force It was, if it was there in the rotor. So can be braced well. So uh, armature winding it is there in the rotor mm, continuously rotating uh, there may be deformation caused by the high centrifugal force but is uh, uh, rotating in a such a high speed it has to rotate at a very high speed to generate very high voltage so there may be deformation uh, caused by centrifugal force uh, so it has to be braced very well armature uh, make it very tight in the rotor so this problem can be avoided if it has been placed in the stator side so there are so many other advantages also there so this is the main advantages of a stationary armature I mean stationary armature winding in the stator. Difference between salient and non-salient pole types, uh, rotors. In a salient pole, poles are projecting out from the surface. Here, the poles are not projecting uh, as the uh, cylinder, uh, portion of the cylinder acts as the poles, hence uh, poles are non-projecting. Air gap is non-inform salient pole because uh, that we can observe here, the air gap is non-inform. So here R gap is different, here R gap is different, but here R gap is uh, uniform due to smooth cylindrical periphery. Diameter is high, axial is small in salient pole, in non-salient, uh, quite opposite, uh, small diameter and large axial length. It's a mechanically weak, mechanically robust non-salient. Preferred for lower speed because a very high V construction, weight is very large, so it can be preferred to one up to 1500 rpm but here non salient pole can be preferred up to 3000 rpm because it is lightweight when compared to salient pole primer uses water turbines i see this here primer is used as steam turbines and electric motors gas turbines for a salient pole type for same size the rating is smaller than cylindrical type for same size rating is higher than 
seal and fold type. Separate damper windings provided. Uh, it is uh, here damper windings are not provide uh, not necessary. So the concept of damper winding is not there in your uh, process. So uh, here damper winding is uh, provided here. Separate damper winding uh, to uh, avoid hunting. So hunting process. So there is a fluctuation in the output voltage to prevent uh, damper winding is provided in salient pole. Here the provision of damper winding is not necessary in non-salient pole type of rotors. EMF equation of alternator. Let Z is equal to number of conductors or coil size in series per phase. Z total number of conductors. Find flux per pole. P number of uh, rotor poles. N rotor speed in RPM. In one revolution, that is 60 by a second, each data conductor is cut by P into 5 Webers. So in one revolution, so each data conductor is cut by P5 Webers, P into 5, because the number of pulls P, so it has to undergo uh, number of pulls P and it will cut 5 Webers. D5 is equal to P into 5, DT, so one revolution, so 60 by n second. So average EMF induced D5 by DT, flux cut by time, so Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction d5 by dt if you take p5 divided by 60 by n that is p5n by 60 volts average emf induced in one stator conductor is one stator conductor that you have to remember one stator conductor if there are z conductors in series per phase z number of conductors you have to add multi sorry is multiplied by number of conductors z total number of conductors that will get as uh, n is equal to 120f by p so if n is equal to 120f by p that will get as 2f5z volts 2f5z volts next if you go for rms value so this is average value average emf per phase average emf per phase with the z number of conductors in one phase next rms value if you consider you have to multiply by 1.11 so we will get 2.22 F5Z. So RMS value per phase can be given as 2.22 F5Z volts. So this is a EMF equation of an alternator. Now, two separate terms comes uh, factors. It is called as a pitch factor and distribution factor. So if you are considering the pitch factor and distribution factor, then EMF equation of alternator ERMS per phase can be modified as 4.44 F5 T into case into KD. So uh, it is a Z, Z is equal to 2T, a number of conductors, it has been replaced by number of tons. So number of conductors is replaced by number of tons, then it will become Z is equal to 2T. Uh, 2t is number of tons tons per phase so the emf equation will become 4.44 f5t into kc into kd where kc is equal to pitch factor kd is equal to distribution factor so this is actual emf equation of an alternator then what is meant by pitch factor and distribution factor let's see pitch factor or coil span factor is defined as the ratio of EMF generated in short pitch coil to the EMF generated in a full pitch coil. It has been given like this. Actual voltage generated in the coil divided by voltage generated in the coil span of 1 degree electrical. So this is actual voltage generated that is EMF generated if it has been short pitch to coil. So it, it is denoted as KC or KP. In some textbook it has been given as KP. In some textbooks it has been given as KC. So KC or KP, it is called as pitch factor. Its value is always less than unity. Now, um, for any armature conductors, it has been given. So armature conductor, one end, it is uh, started with the north pole and it has to end with the south pole. Other end, it has to end with south pole. So this is actually the winding it has been wound in armature. So armature one conductor, if you consider, it is the one that has to start with the 
north pole and uh, other end it has end with south pole in some armature construction according, according to the customer requirement so what they used to do is they will start with the north pole uh, one end of the armature conductor and uh, it will end before the south pole so at the other end it will be end so before the south pole so this is called as short pitched coil uh, this is called a short pitch angle alpha so there are some advantages are there in the short pitch coil there is some disadvantages uh, dis advantages also there in the short pitch coil but is all going according to the customer requirement if it has been short pitched coil then definitely it will affect the rms value of the emf generated in the generator to overcome the difficulty we are adding a small term called pitch factor in the emf equation of a generator it is called as kc so or kp so kp or kc it has been given as a emf generated in the short pitch coil divided by emf generated in the full pitch coil where alpha it is called as a short pitch angle alpha so this much angle it has been short pitched by this much angle alpha otherwise it have been 180 degree electrical start with one north pole and is a other coil i mean is a other end of the coil is end with the south pole but due to short pitch coil so it is ending before the south pole it is winding is ending before the south pole so this much angle alpha angle it has been short pitched so is given by cos alpha by 2 so if you introduce a pitch factor in emf equation so this will be balanced this problem will be balanced so kc is equal to cos alpha by 2 where alpha is equal to short pitch angle okay next it is called as distribution factor it is a ratio of emf induced for distributed winding to the emf induced in a concentrated winding so now what is that actually so emf induced and distributed winding so there are so many slots are present in armature if number of slots are fully utilized for the armature winding in an alternator that means to say so each armature winding is equally distributed in all the slots of armature it is called as distributed type of winding in some of the alternators once again it may go according to the output according to the customer requirement some of the slots which are provided in the armature may not be fulfilled here it may be kept blank for further any modification that has been done in the alternator or further future extension plan so due to that some of the slots in the armature are kept blank and uh, all windings are situated in the only some of the slots which are provided under poles of the face so it is called as concentrated type of winding that means to say all armature windings are concentrated on a particular slots by leaving some of the slots free for the further further extension or the customer requirement it is called concentrated type of winding distributed type of winding means all the windings are completely utilized for the armature winding which is there in the stator so there is two types of winding so the distribution factor is given by emf induced in the distributed winding to the emf induced when the winding it has been concentrated so it is given as a slots divided by poles into faces it is given by sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2 where beta is equal to slot angle so one is divided by slots per pole so in how much angle uh, in the slot it has been kept the armature winding has been kept and m is equal to slots per pole per face slots per pole per face if we do per face it will faces will come here in the denominator so m is equal to slots per pole per face beta is equal to slot angle kd is equal to distribution factor is given by sin m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2 if you add this factor in the emf equation then uh, so 
EMF equation of alternator will not be altered. So, so this is one more term called distribution factor. So, further uh, information you can refer this uh, link, the circuitgroup.com. And uh, one more thing is the winding factor, it will be given in the problem winding factor is equal to distribution factor into pitch factor.